Also, thanks, Jenna. Also, uh, we do hope that our session today will be quite interactive. So we're looking forward to, uh, of course, the panel and the discussion, but then having quite a bit of Q&A. So we would love it if you would uh, turn your video cameras on, uh, remain interactive, and keep those questions in mind as we go through and we have uh, the Q&A uh, portion uh, open for everyone a little bit later in the moderated discussion. My name is Lucia Monzo, and I actually am the president of the Columbia Women's Business Society alumna at Columbia University. For those of you who may not be familiar with our organization, we are a shared interest group uh, at Columbia. It means we're open to all of the schools at Columbia and really do look to host a variety of programming, events, and share content with uh, the members of our organization across a variety of business sectors, industries, and really are focused on bringing people together, networking opportunity, skill set building opportunities, and hosting discussions like these called our Ask Me Anything series, where people can come together in a much more informal uh, environment and can really learn from each other, potentially meet new individuals, and really gain confidence uh, in career transitioning. So a lot of our AMA series are around this. If you'd like to have or see other programming from us, we would love for you to join our newsletter. And thank you, Jenna, for sharing it in the chat. Please feel free to join us uh, in upcoming events or reach out to us with any events that you'd like for us to do and or would like to participate in as volunteers. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Tali, who will get us started on the moderated session. Tali, hand it over to you. Thank you, Lucia. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Tali. And just to kind of go immediately into that interactivity, I'm actually going to launch a quick poll or two to get a sense of where folks in this group uh, stand in terms of transitioning out of law or out of their existing career. Some of these questions will be specifically asking about law, but if you're not a lawyer and just here generally uh, for career transition advice, feel free to answer it in that context. So I'm going to launch the first one. And I hope folks can see it. It's my first time launching a Zoom poll. And uh, if my moderators see it and you want to answer too, that's cool. Uh, but I'll just give folks a little bit of time to answer it. Oh, there's a little timer. I'll give folks another 15 seconds to answer. Last call for how long have you been, been considering transitioning out of legal practice or whatever, or whatever other profession you're considering transitioning out of? I'm going to end the poll. I think you all can see the results now. Oh, wait, I click share results and then you can see them. Uh, and so it looks like we have a concentration of, of folks uh, in the shorter timeline, zero to six months, and then a longer timeline, one plus years. Um, so that's pretty cool, I think. And then we have some folks in the middle, six months to a year. And I'm going to kick off one more poll um, before we go into our introductions. And let's kick off a second one. And this question is to get a sense of where folks are on their journey to considering um, a path outside of law. So if you know uh, what path you're interested in pursuing yet, or not quite yet, just getting a, a sense of where folks in the group are. Another tiny bit of time, we still have some results coming in. Few more moments and I'll share the results of this one. Okay, so it looks like, oh, share the results. It looks like some folks have no idea what they wanna do outside of law. We've got 33, 31% of y'all um, don't know quite yet what you wanna do next. Some of you think you know what you wanna do but aren't quite sure. And then um, it looks about 30% or, 8% knows know what they want to do, and then 23% fall into another category. So a little bit of a smattering in terms of where folks want to end up. 
Um, so that's kind of exciting, I think, because we have uh, four our panelists today, including myself, um, who have very different experiences in terms of how we got to where we are. And I'm super excited to share more about my experience um, and background. And I'll, I'll start by introducing myself and then kick it over to my fellow panelists to, intro to introduce themselves before we dive into some questions. Uh, so by way of background, I am a Columbia Law alum. I graduated in 2015 and practiced for about a year and a half doing bankruptcy law at a New York City firm. And uh, prior to that, during my law school years, I, I interned in all sorts of different capacities. I did some an internship at the Manhattan DA's office. I worked. Uh, I did a judicial clerkship over a summer. I did some externships, um, you know, in DV units uh, at the Queens County DA's office. And I, I tried various things um, and before going into bankruptcy and ultimately realized after a year and a half that none of it was for me and decided to uh, leave for other pastures. And I started with legal operations at a tech company called Datadog and then transitioned to Netflix and now am a product manager at a legal tech company. So gradually shifting further and further away from law but still leveraging my legal background. Um, with that, I'll kick it over. Uh, Hannah, you're the next square that I see. So I'm gonna kick it over to you to introduce yourself. Sure. Hi, um, my name is Hannah. I was also Columbia class of 2015 with Dolly. Um, and I also worked in bankruptcy at a big law firm in New York City. Um, and I was there for about a year. And then I ended up going back to school for, I went to social work school. And now I work as a psychotherapist. Lisa, I'm going to kick it over to you. To okay, yourself. I think that makes sense. Um, I'm Elisa. I graduated from Harvard Law School in 2014. Um, like Tali and Hannah, I also worked as a bankruptcy and restructuring associate at a big law firm. Tali and I actually worked together down the hall from each other. Um, and yeah, I was really excited about bankruptcy. I took it in law school and loved it. Um, and soon realized that the practice of bankruptcy is not, you know, not as, not what my bankruptcy class led me to believe. Um, and yeah, after three years at the firm, um, knew I had to get out. Uh, I worked with a career coach. I actually thought I wanted to be a career coach for a little bit. Um, but after being away from the law firm for, um, for a little while, I realized I really wanted to be a therapist, which had been in the back of my mind for a while. So like Hannah, I also went back to school for social work and I'm now practicing as a psychotherapist as well. And now Tom, last but not least. Yeah, hi there. I'm Tom Hoffman. Um, I uh, went Notre Dame undergrad and then I went to Loyola in Chicago for law school. Um, and then in between, I was a paralegal at a, a big law law firm uh, in Chicago. And then uh, sort of like Tali, I've, I did a bunch of different stuff in law school and I, had, I worked in politics, I worked in securities regulation. Um, finally, my last job as an attorney though was in a big law capacity as a property tax associate at a big firm in Minneapolis where I live now. Um, and uh, that was a thoroughly negative experience and it had been my goal up to that point to get to big law and I didn't get it right away after law school. So I felt like I'd really achieved something at that point. But uh, like other people are saying, the practice was not exactly what we had been led to believe it would be. And uh, so I ended up leaving and also working with a career coach, taking some time out to kind of reflect on uh, what I was good at and where I wanted to go and realized that I really had kind of run the gamut of what I could see myself doing in law. and. Uh, for, for different reasons, none of it was a very good fit. Um, so I decided to make a clean break um, and I went to a coding boot camp and now I work as a software engineer. Um, and I've been doing that for almost a year now and absolutely love it. And I'm super happy to be here and talk about um, making crazy career transitions because it's uh, a totally rewarding thing and scary to do. And I wish someone else would have explained it to me before I did it, so yeah. Thank you all. Um, I'm gonna throw you all back a little bit and ask uh, the first question is, what drove your initial decision to attend law school? And I'll, I'll answer last and I'm gonna make you answer in reverse order. So Tom, you go first. Yes, yeah, um, totally uninspiring reasons. Uh, a combination of fear and family and societal pressure uh, mixed with type A sensibility of wanting to find some channel for my ambition 
and having majored in a liberal arts degree and that being the most logical step after that. Um, and so I, I, back when I was in high school, I was the captain of my mock trial team. And my parents always used to like brag about that and how I was definitely going to have a law career and stuff like that. And then I went to college and grew my hair long and started playing in a Led Zeppelin cover band. And it, it, it things took a turn uh, away from law for a while, but eventually I came to my senses and realized I had to kind of try to grow up or, or do something more legit. And uh, law was the most logical next step, um, which I have learned is a really, really uh, crappy reason to do something. Um, it's, it's, it's much better to work from your intrinsic motivations of, of things that speak to who you are as a person. So that's my explanation. I love that. <laughs> um, Alisa, I'm going to kick it to you to share why you went to law school to begin with. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks, Tom. Um, yeah, like you, I felt some family pressure as well, and definitely the desire to do something legit. Um, but I also, I would say a big part of it for me was intellectual curiosity. Um, I, so in the two years between undergrad and law school, spent one of those years in Germany teaching English. And while I was there, like became fascinated by on the differences between German society and American society and was so curious about how law played into that. And yeah, I, I just wanted to learn. And, and that was a big, a big part of the decision. Hannah, over to you. Uh, I mean, I really relate to what you're both saying. Um, I also, I mean, I, I tried some different things after college. I was very excited about academic work in college and I wanted to do something that I thought would be intellectually stimulating. I liked research and writing and I thought this would be a good way to kind of have almost like an academic career, but more practical. And um, I thought, yeah, I thought it would be a kind of a good grown up way to use some of the things I knew I enjoyed and some skills I developed earlier in my life. And I will echo a lot of what everyone before me said. I also felt a lot of pressure, um, familiar pressure in particular to choose a particular career path. And the law was one of the options that was on my menu. And so it was something I explored a lot in high school and in college. I also, Tom was on mock trial and I really loved it, but being a practicing lawyer, it turns out is nothing like that. Um, but I, I went down that path and you know had decided it pretty early and I think it also made it really easy to not think about you know what it was beyond the law and this goal of becoming a lawyer that I was interested in so very early on had decided it and never really thought about it again uh, and so not much went into it other than you know I think I like this and you know it'll make my parents proud of me and it's you know a stable career and has a lot of opportunities um, so that was that was my logic. Um, and I'm actually curious what folks in the audience, what, why they went to law school. And so I'm going to kick off another poll um, that I think I just launched it. Yes. Um, asking why you all went to law school. Uh, and there's another category. So, you know, if it's not one of the detailed reasons, I'm curious to know if there, there are others. We'll give folks a moment. And Stephanie, I see your question in the chat. I'm going to jot it down so I can make sure to ask. Folks, another moment. Last few moments to answer last call. All right, I'm going to share these results. It's funny, uh, nobody said that they felt pressured by their family, which is interesting because all the panelists, it sounded like, um, except maybe Hannah, it just sounded like you didn't necessarily mention that, uh, had that reason. So it's exciting to see so many people didn't have that as their reason. Um, or maybe, maybe it was part of the reason, but it's not multi-select, so you couldn't indicate it. But I'm sorry you had to choose just one. Um, but it's, it's cool to see that so many folks wanted to become a lawyer um, and they didn't, it sounds like 
uh, a handful of folks also didn't know what they wanted to do after graduating from undergrad. And then there's a whole other category. So if folks wanna drop a comment in the chat to share what their other reason was, I would love to know what it is and just genuinely curious, but uh, also okay if you prefer not to share that. Uh, so I'm gonna ask the panelists another question. Uh, what became the catalyst for each of you to make the change from law to another career? Um, I'm going to go out of order this time. Elisa, I'll kick it to you first. Um, yeah, so I had been thinking about leaving for a long time, like almost since day one. Um, you know, it, maybe it took a couple months before I started thinking about it, but really, you know, I was kind of on my way out as soon as I got in the door, um, but it, but it did take me a while. And um, yeah, I, I think what finally did it was just, you know, a bad couple of months that I had, like, I really just reached a breaking point, um, you know, having to cancel plans with, with friends and family and having to stay up all night working on these things that I, I felt like just really didn't matter. Um, um, didn't really mean anything at the end of the day. And one really bad night in desperation, I started Googling career coaches because I, you know, I, I just can't do this anymore. Um, but it, it kind of, it, it had to come to that uh, before I actually like got up the gumption to, to make the leap. I'll, I'll go after you. I hope it's okay. I remember coming down to your office sometimes and you had a sticky note with a date on it for a little while saying, this is the date that I'm leaving by. Um, and I think we both shared this sort of feeling like there's a, there's an end date. We got to get out. Yeah. But I stayed, unlike you, I stayed <laughs> like two years after that initial date. But it's yeah. hard to leave. Um, yeah. I get that. Um, but I, I, for me, what the, the catalyst to make a change, I think it was fairly gradual. Um, it was very quick that I realized, you know, I, I want to get out. But in terms of actually uh, jumping ship, I think um, the moment that I realized that it was definitely not a thing, you know, being a lawyer wasn't for me. I, I have always been a type A person, Tom, like what you're saying, you know, I always was threw myself into the work that I was doing, um, whether it was schoolwork or the jobs that I did. And I didn't feel that passion for being a lawyer in any of the jobs that I did and any of the externships at the firm. I just, nothing seemed to spark that fire in me. And I wanted to feel that fire. I wanted to have that back. And so, you know, I tried all these different areas and none of them did it. And so at some point I was like, you know, I could move to another firm and see if that does the trick, but I feel confident enough from all the experience of uh, experiences I've had in these other areas of law and these other offices, that it's not just about the, the place. It's more about what it is that I'm doing. And so um, for me, it was like, okay, I'm going to look for something that can bring that fire and that passion back into my life. Um, so with that, uh, I'll kick it over to Tom and then Hannah. Sure. Um, I would I would love to pretend that I was as hero, heroic or had as much forethought as the other panelists uh, said. Um, actually, the way it happened for me was I got into big law and I hated it the whole time. And then one day I randomly got a call from HR and they said, hey, we're here with your senior partner and uh, we'd like to talk to you. And I was let go. Um, and it was one of the most embarrassing things that has ever happened to me. Um, it was I was completely caught off guard. The reasoning behind it doesn't matter. It was, they came up with a reason to get me out of there. But at, at that moment, it was kind of like, you go through these sorts of like near death experiences where you're like, oh my God, what has just happened? But I had the presence of mind in that meeting to be like, you know what, this is gonna be okay. And I'm not gonna let this wreck me. And I'm gonna go figure out something else. Um, so uh, I took off a couple of weeks close to a month, I took a huge Western road trip. I, I drove just to blow off steam. I drove all the way from Minneapolis to Los Angeles and back and stopped at like 11 national parks and camped out and visited friends that I never got to see because I was constantly busy in big law um, or slaving away in, 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 in other capacities. Um, and then uh, at that point, I uh, kind of came to the conclusion that this chapter is done. Um, and I'm going to take this as an opportunity to find something that really appeals to me authentically and uh, capitalizes on my strengths and my passions in a way that um, in a way that actually works. Um, so that was when I I sat down, I worked doc review and hung out with a, a career coach and and said I basically showed up at her door and said, you know what, my exact words were, 
I'm not thinking of something that I'm, I probably would like to do. And I want to figure out what that is. I want to, I want to figure out something that I'm overlooking right now. Um, so we started from the ground up and we took a bunch of personality tests and I did a bunch of networking and met a lot of people. And it was a very carefully thought out uh, decision. But once I decided to do it, it was pretty, I wouldn't say easy, but creating the critical mass to actually say, I'm going to do this was the hard part. And then executing once I had the plan was pretty straightforward. Um, but yeah, so, so my catalyst was, um, a termination. Um, and, uh, uh, it was, it was a very, uh, kind of a earth shattering moment in my life, but, um, responding to that, uh, built a lot of character. So, yeah. I think it's my turn. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I think throughout law school, I was kind of becoming more interested in this field. I was going, started going to conferences, like mental health conferences and reading more and making friends in psychotherapy field. So I think it was kind of building throughout law school and I was not as interested in the coursework as I had kind of really hoped I would be. Um, I kind of work, I kind of distracted myself. I worked on a big academic article and it kept me excited. Um, but then studying for the bar, I wasn't doing that anymore. And it just felt very not alive. My mind felt not alive. Um, and then there were a few moments when I was at the firm where I think were really disillusioning. Like I remember when I, I was working on some big bankruptcy and I always thought bankruptcy law was kind of like humanitarian kind of law to give people a fresh start. And I kind of realized what I was working on. And it was like, <laughs> like our project was trying to like basically screw some employees out of their pensions. And I, I, I had been like working on all these documents and didn't really know what I was doing. And then I realized that was what I was doing. And I was like, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to do this. Um, and there were some other late nights where we were just wasting a lot of time to bill and didn't feel good. So those were some of the catalyst moments, but it was building for a while. Thank you all for sharing that. Um, a follow-up question is, and some of this might be repetitive of your earlier answer, uh, what made you realize that it was not the type of law you were practicing, but specifically that you don't want to be a lawyer? Um, like I said, I thought about going to another firm and trying it out, trying a different area of practice. I'd only been in bankruptcy for a year and a half, at which point still early enough to jump ship. I personally, like I said, had tried a bunch of things throughout my, my under, my, not my undergrad, my um, law school years, and none of it did the trick for me. And I was just sort of at a point where I was like, why would I keep trying something that seems to just not work for the sake of, of trying it when I know there's something out there outside of law that will spark my, my passions because I've, I've experienced that before pre-law school. Um, so for me, it was, it was that realization of like, I've tried a bunch of things and none of it's doing it. Why am I going to keep kind of trying to throw stuff at the, the lawyer wall and seeing if it sticks? Um, and yeah, that, that was it for me. Um, bankruptcy was the last straw. Uh, so I will kick it to Hannah again. And then Elisa and Tom, if you want to go in that order, that would be great. Sure. Um, so I wish, like I think someone else said this before, I wish I had a well thought out answer for this, but it was really impulsive. I think I just was very unhappy and wanted to get as far away from the law as possible. Um, and looking back, I sometimes do wish that I had tried some other areas before switching to something new entirely. Um, but I also feel pretty good about it in the end. I think it's kind of, I think my impression is it's pretty hard to have a decent lifestyle and in this, in the law to have a job that you, that, you know, is fulfilling and interesting and not crazy hours. This is just based on being married to a lawyer and watching him. And he works in a very different, not in big law at all. So not, not thought out impulsive, but I'm not, I don't think that I would have, I think it would have been hard for me to find something that met that need of having a little better lifestyle within the traditional law career. Um, yeah, I don't have a, a super well thought out answer to this either. Definitely like you, Hannah, like part of me was like, just get me as far away from this as possible. I was just done um, with big law and, and wanted to do something really different. Um, but, 
you know, it was also about like, I, I this sense was growing in me that I, I wanted to do something where I could be more creative, where there was real flexibility. Um, and, you know, law, you know, no matter no matter what kind of law, I, I just felt like law was sort of in, in a box and I wanted to be outside of the box. Um, and I wanted to, to talk to people about the things that really matter to them. And um, yeah, what, what I really cared about, I, I just couldn't see myself finding that in the law. Um, so it was pretty clear to me that, that it was just the wrong profession entirely. And yeah, for me, I, I would re-echo kind of what Holly said, like I'd, I'd tried uh, a ton of different roles and the last role that I had in that, in that uh, property tax department um, was kind of what I had leading up to that point thought would be the pinnacle. And like, I'd, I'd finally arrived and now I was in big law and now everything was going to be gravy and I was going to write, write it to partner and everything was great. Um, so when that when that was kind of the last straw and when, when it ended the way that it did, it left a really bitter taste in my mouth. Um, but at the same time, kind of an empowering taste and just being like, you know what, like, I kind of like the idea of doing something. I've been so risk averse for so long in my life. Why don't I just take a chance and do something wild um, and see where it lands? Um, because this isn't working. So at least let's try something different. Because um, this, this way has failed. Let's do something different. Awesome. So I have another poll I'm going to kick off. Uh, let me stop this one. And this is a question and, and panelists, I'm going to ask you a question about this shortly. Um, but I'm curious for folks here, how anxious are you about losing your financial and or time investment from becoming a lawyer if you were to leave practice? Is that a factor in your um, consideration for leaving? Give folks another 10 seconds or so. We've got 42% participation. It's about half of you holding out on me. Last call for sharing. And we'll end and share the results. So it seems like we've got a mix, but uh, we have a a handful of folks who are very anxious and another handful who are somewhat anxious and a smaller handful who are neutral or, or not anxious about it at all. And so with that, I'd love to actually ask the panelists if like how they, they reconciled um, a career shift after investing so much time and money into becoming a lawyer, into schooling, exams, uh, the time actually practicing. Um, and, you know, if you could share whether or not you were concerned about that cost of transitioning, that would be really great. And uh, Tom, I'll kick it to you first. Um, sure. Um, so I, I, I'll be very straightforward about it. I was one of the reasons that I went to Loyola rather than a higher rank school was that I got a massive scholarship. Um, and I am well aware that that has afforded me the freedom to be able to do what I've been able to do. Um, I didn't have debt when I got terminated. And so I could kind of start fresh and not and not worry about it. Um, but as far as like, it's, it's such an incredibly long drawn out process of becoming a lawyer. And um, when you hang out with a lot of other lawyers in, in, in bar reviews and in, in happy hours and whatever, it becomes part of your identity. Um, it, it feels great when you're introduced at a cocktail party and it's like, oh, I'm a lawyer, yeah, at this great firm. And like, I'd be lying if that didn't feel good. Um, so letting go of uh, being lawyer, a lawyer as part of a central part of my identity was definitely something that I needed to take some time to process. Um, but I, I'm getting away from the question. It was, it was, was I worried about it? Of, of course, I was worried about okay, it. But again, you, can, you can take the, the answer I'll, whichever direction you'd like. Okay, I'll take poetic license. Um, but yes, I, I was still concerned about the potential costs of transitioning, and that is. That was, that was definitely part of the plan that we laid out with my career coach. Um, I, you know, I told her, I'm like, I don't, I don't have the time or the patience to take four years to figure something else out to do. I need to do something that I can do relatively quickly and inexpensively. Um, and so that was, it, it just so happens to be that tech has a very low barrier to entry. 
Um, and so that was a perfect fit um, for my needs of being able to affect change quickly and at a relatively low cost. So that's my answer for that. Thank you, Elisa, Hannah, and then I'll go last. Yeah, um, so I, I don't think that, you know, the fact that I had invested a lot of time and money into becoming a lawyer, um, that I don't know if I, I felt ever like that was holding me back. Um, definitely, you know, that's why it took me a while to, um, to sort of accept this idea that I could go back to school, um, you know, while I was still at the firm and starting to think about maybe, you know, doing, becoming a therapist, um, the thought of going back to school seemed impossible because I had I'd spent those years in law school and it was so expensive. That seemed like just a no-go. So it definitely took some time away, away from the law firm, um, you know, just time with myself reflecting um, before I could come to terms with that. But yeah, I, you know, I have a very supportive husband um, who is also a lawyer and, you know, because of his support, um, it wasn't as scary financially leaving. So I'm, I'm really grateful to have had that. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say, you know, being, being in big law, you're kind of surrounded by a lot of people who like you are also afraid to leave. So I, I think just this general sense of anxiety people had about, um, about leaving after investing so much time and money. Like I definitely felt that even if I wasn't, you know, consciously thinking about that particular aspect of it so much. Um, it was just all around me. So, yeah. Um, I kind of similar to what I was saying before, I, I felt like it didn't hold me back so much because I was more impulsive about, about the decision. And I also was fortunate to not have a lot of debt. Um, but now I think it, it is something that's really hard. I have a lot of friends from law school and I go, they've like, they're all like buying beautiful apartments and I'm not. And it's stiff. It's hard to not be in the same financial position I would have been in. Yeah, and I, I, um, I'm not so fortunate as, as everyone here. Uh, I had a ton of student debt, both from undergrad and law school and uh, leaving legal practice besides the kind of reputational identity component to it, which Tom, I absolutely agree when I, you know, had to stop saying like, oh, I'm a lawyer. I, you know, it's, it's definitely a shift after you spent so many years working towards that. Um, but I took an almost 50% pay cut leaving the law firm for my first post-grad job. And I knew that that meant a lifestyle change that meant changes for our future in terms of what we wanted to achieve and by when, um, that, uh, you know, it was, it was scary. It, I wasn't sure if it was worth it. There's definitely a, a golden handcuffs or component to working at a firm. And, and especially when you see all of your peers in these other boats, um, I will say to the extent that it might provide some hope to folks, like at my second post-law job, I made the same amount that I made my first year at the law firm. Um, so it is possible to take that cut and grow back into kind of a, a law firm salary, depending on what career path you go down and there are opportunities. And we'll talk about this a little later. Uh, we had a question about kind of legal tech in particular, there are opportunities at startups that offer kind of different financial incentives that don't look the same as working at a firm, but do offer some kind of uh, light at the end of the tunnel. But for me, it was, it was very scary to give up the money and also the, the time component. You invest seven years in becoming a lawyer, obviously four of those are undergrad, but for me, it was kind of, an, there was always the plan of going to law school. And um, I, I was scared what it would mean to, to kind of give that up, give up that piece of my identity for a total unknown. Um, but, you know, to Tom's point, I think there was a little, uh, at, at a certain point, you reach a point where you realize that there's a lot of freedom in that and giving up the picture that you had for yourself and starting to explore the possibilities that exist beyond that. And so um, definitely concerned, but I think it worked out. Um, and with that, I'll ask my next question for the panelists. What networks or support systems helped you in your transition phases? 
Alisa, you talked a little bit about this, so I'll kick it over to you first. Yeah, so my husband was just such a great partner um, through this whole process for me, like really, really supportive um, from the beginning of my career change, I, my career change and me, you know, finding something that I really loved. Um, so, so that was tremendously, I mean, that was just, that was crucial for me to have his love and support and um, yeah, friends who were enthusiastic, but really, I mean, I had a great career coach. She was, she was amazing. Um, she really helped me. So I, I would highly recommend to anyone seriously thinking about making a switch, um, find a good career coach. Um, yeah. Can't say, can't praise, can't praise her enough, really. I'm gonna send it to Tom next because I know he said he worked with a career coach as well. And then Hannah and I'll, I'll, go, I'll go last for this one. Yeah, it was basically um, I don't, I, for, for better, for worse. I, I, it sounds like other people on this panel it genuinely came with a genuine intellectual curiosity about the law and like genuinely enjoyed studying it. I hated law school thoroughly. I didn't have any business being there. Um, I was I was in it for the Benjamins and that's just it's embarrassing to say that now and I'm so glad that I'm I, I'm so glad that I failed in that in that totally empty uh, pursuit. Um, but as far as support network, number one was a career coach and there were multiple sessions where I came in and I was like, you know what, I think I might start a DUI solo practice. She's like, you're not doing that, Tom. You're breaking away from this. You're getting out. No, you can't be a lawyer anymore. So she really she, uh, she kind of talked me off the ledge of kind of buckling under the pressure again. And then also, uh, it was kind of funny when I got back from that road trip, um, I happened to be uh, doing some online dating and I met this woman and we fell in love and now I'm married to her uh, two years later. And she believed in me when I was an unemployed bum and she saw that um, she didn't, she saw that I, I, I could write the ship from where it was and her support throughout that process was huge for me. Um, because uh, speaking from like a male perspective, this sort of, I don't know if you call it toxic masculinity, but you're brought up to necessarily be like a provider mentality, um, at least from the family that I grew up in, men are supposed to be a provider and making a lot of money and um, having a woman that was not like financial, that was not like the women that I dated when I was in big law, who liked the fact that I wore a suit and drove an Audi. Um, I, the fact that she was wired to appreciate me for who I was um, definitely made the transition easier. Another thing that I would recommend doing as soon as you decide to make the shift is unfollow all of your law school classmates that you don't like on LinkedIn, because then you'll stop comparing yourself to them. Um, I'm a big fan of getting away from social media and uh, uh, trying to focus on what works for you and not how it looks to somebody else outside of that. Um, so those were the main two. And then I just, I, I'm in Minnesota now and my whole family is here and I have a very supportive family that at first was kind of shocked by it, but then came to understand that it was definitely for the best. Um, and uh, they continued to encourage me the whole way until now I'm standing on my feet with a great job that I like. So, yeah. Um, I think thinking about it, I think that um, it was really helpful and supportive to me as I mentioned, I started even in law school and through, and then after I started becoming more involved in psychotherapy community, I was specifically interested in psychoanalysis. And I started going to a lot of conferences and lectures, and I did some classes and I met a lot of people in this, this field. And I think that was a really big support system for me, even though it was a new professional world that I wasn't even thinking that I would become part of. I was just more curious and dabbling. Um, and I had a good therapist myself and also a supportive partner. Yeah, echo Hannah's comment about her therapist, <laughs> my therapist also, integral part of my journey for sure. Me too. <laughs> now I feel left out. Um, no, but I, I think it's a great help and I've, I've gone to therapists at other point in my life, life and um, would definitely see how that could be helpful in this context of transitioning careers. Uh, for me, it was 
Um, my partner also, he was also incredibly supportive. I remember, uh, you know, it puts a lot of pressure on, on the other partner if you're losing a huge chunk of your salary and I was worried what he would think of it, but he has never batted an eye at, you know, what I made, whether I made more than him or less than him, he's never seemed to care and has always been supportive of me and kind of all the things that I've tried working on. Um, and also my parents, to be honest, I was really scared to tell them that I wanted to leave practice um, because I felt like I'd be disappointing them. And uh, I remember having the conversation and was pleasantly surprised at how supportive they were. Um, they knew how unhappy I had been and they wanted the best for me. And so they, you know, there were a little bit of, you know, are you sure you don't want to try another firm before you jump ship? Um, but generally they really just wanted me to pursue whatever it was that made me happiest. And I think for the most part that in our closest networks, that's what people want for us, what will make us happy. And so there might be a lot of fear of sharing, you know, what your hopes and dreams and uh, desires are with your closest uh, family members, because you might feel like you're going to disappoint them. But I think I would just suggest, you know, having that conversation with them, because hopefully we'll all be pleasantly surprised and, and feel that support from them, even though we might not have expected it. Um, and with that, I'm actually going to see, we have a couple more questions, but before I, I go to them, I actually want to see if the audience has questions for us. Um, I know we had the question uh, about the area of law. We had some questions submitted about tech, but I really want to use the time for the folks who are here um, uh, primarily. So if you have a specific question, feel free to unmute and chime in or type it in the chat and we can answer that. Um, and if we don't get any, I, I'm happy to, to ask the remaining questions we had planned. I'll shush for a moment. Hopefully someone will unmute. Oh, I see a raised hand from Stephanie Fiddler. Stephanie? Hi, everybody. Um, this was more just an idea that popped into my head for anybody who might be listening. And, um, I, you know, when I was hearing you all talk about how you went back to school and the difficulty just of sort of saying, hey, I have all this law school debt and now I'm going to go study something completely new. But then I also heard some of you say, even from in law school, you began to think that maybe this is not what you wanted to do. And I just thought, you know, for anybody who's listening who may still be in school and they're thinking, I'm not sure if this is something I want to do, you might want to consider a joint degree, like when you were talking about doing social work, because then you can just leverage the credits you've already taken. And then instead of going back to school and having to do a complete new area of study for another couple of years, and you can shave off a year. So sometimes if you're already in law school and you figure this is not for me, but you apply to like Columbia's other graduate school of whatever you're interested in, then you might be able to come up with a course of study where you can use the law credits you already have as the electives in the new course of study, shave off a year, and you don't completely have to like graduate law school and then go back and start over. So just wanted to throw that out as an idea. I don't know if any of the people who are on this chat or people who are still in school, or if everybody's graduated, then obviously that advice is not going to help. But <laughs> it was just something that came to mind because I was struck by how many of you thought from you were still in school. I'm not sure I want to go down this road. That's an awesome call out, Stephanie. Um, and I will say just to piggyback off it for folks who might be interested in doing that, like it can be also an additional financial expense and time component to adding, let's say an MBA or some other degree to your JD. But one thing that you usually can do if you're not sure you're you and or you're not entirely sure you want to commit to that is try auditing a class in one of the other schools. And that could be a low commitment type of way to explore other areas while not necessarily saying, okay, I'm going to do another year of school and pay another $50,000. So uh, you can obviously jump in if you're ready, but if you uh, are interested in just exploring, it could be a cool way to do that. Um, does anybody else on the panel have thoughts on that? I know Hannah and Elisa, you, you went back. So if you have any um, thoughts on whether that could be uh, something to do if you're still in law school, that would be great to hear. Yeah, I, I wish that um, I had had the foresight, you know, at the time um to to do that i i actually i'm not sure if it was an option at harvard to do a joint social work degree but yeah i think that's a great idea for anyone in law school who's who's um who's now feeling unsure um but also at the time i was like really exhausted law school was really hard and i don't know if i would have had it in me to stay an extra year um but that being said great idea thank you for the comment 
Yeah, I agree. Good idea. I wish I did it. And Tom, not to be exclusionary, if you had any thoughts on it as well, obviously feel free to chime in. I don't think they do joint comp sci law degrees yet, um, but maybe they will because legal tech is a thing. Um, so um, for my particular transition at this point in time, that that wouldn't have been an option. But again, like I say, if you have the foresight and the guts to do it, by all means, take action. If, you're, if your gut's telling you this isn't right, listen to it. Um, at least for in my experience, that feeling never went away. Thank you. And we have another question um, in the chat. Do you have recommendations on how to find a good career coach or therapist? Is there more to it than Googling? As the person who hasn't used a career coach or therapist, I will not answer this one, um, but Tom, I'll have you start. Sure, sure. Um, I can speak to, I have all kinds of therapists and stuff because um, I'm a head case. Um, but uh, my, I could, I'd be happy to share my career coach in the chat. Um, I, what actually the answer is, it's kind of circular. My therapist recommended me to my career coach. Um, and so uh, it was word of mouth and it, it was, she was, she spoke very highly of, of, of Cindy, who was my career coach. And um, yeah, that's, that's how I found her. As far as therapists, I've shopped around um, and I've, I've been in and out of therapy um, throughout my life. Um, I think it definitely has a place. Um, and I, I like the fact that it's becoming more normalized in a way that it wasn't uh, earlier growing up. Um, I find it very useful to talk things through with somebody. Um, I guess for me, what my advice about that, having had many different therapists is advocate for yourself and hold out for a good fit. And if, and if you're not, if you don't feel like you can open up and, and be yourself to your therapist, then don't stick with them. Um, and, uh, that can, there's, there's different factors. Maybe you want someone who's older. Maybe you want someone who's more your age. Maybe you would prefer someone of the same gender. Um, there's a lot of different ways to think about it, but my advice, and it, it kind of is just a broader thing is if, if something's not working, try something else, um, and realize that, um, there's, there's plenty of therapists to go around and you're definitely, if you keep looking, you'll find a good one for you. Lisa and then Hannah. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard to find a good therapist. It's, it's hard to find a good fit. Um, most people I know who really like their therapist did have to shop around for a while. Um, my current therapist, I saw him, um, he gave a talk somewhere and I thought he was great and I reached out to him and he was taking new clients. And um, so that, I got lucky with that. Um, but yeah, um, I think, you know, you have to usually have to try on a few, a few different people before you find someone who really clicks. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to share my career coach's name as well. Um, yeah, like I said, I was Googling in the middle of the night, found this person, you know, did, did a lot of research before I reached out to her, like, you know, look to see if she had published interesting articles and read a lot of testimonials. Um, but yeah, I think Google, Google is your friend when it comes to finding, finding a career coach. Uh, Google was my friend. Um, well, I didn't use a career coach, but I belong to a pretty great professional community for therapy. And I, we have a listserv and I'd be happy if anyone wants help, you can tell me if, if you'd like to, I'd be happy to help give you some referrals. If you tell me a little bit about what you're looking for and in your insurance information or so feel free to, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I can help you. And then I think we have time for one more question from Carla. Uh, for those of us that spoke to law not being su a sustainable lifestyle or work-life balance, do you feel different now in your new career path? Um, I can start with this one. I don't know that I spoke a ton about work-life balance, but definitely something that was a factor. Um, although I will say, Elisa, I think you worked a lot harder than I did at Freed Frank um, in our bankruptcy days. Um, but I think I absolutely feel like my lifestyle is is more sustainable and I feel totally different about my career. Um, I feel like I have the freedom and, and comfort to 
log off and totally ignore my phone after hours. And the choices I make when I make them to work after hours are my own. And usually they're on my own projects and I have the time to do that um, now that I'm no longer a lawyer. And I, I have the energy to do that. I think that's the more important point that I have the desire and the energy and the passion for it. Whereas when I was at the firm, I felt kind of like a, a hollow shell. Um, so with that, I'll kick it over uh, Elisa as, as my, my colleague um, from the firm, and then Tom and Hannah, if you have anything to add after. It's, I'm sorry, could you repeat, could you repeat yeah, the, the question? The question was um, to the point of, of kind of not having a sustainable work-life balance and lifestyle at the, you know, one practicing law, do you feel differently about your work-life balance now in your new career? Yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's night and day, honestly. Um, I am now in a field that really prioritizes, um, um, really prioritizes wellness and self-care and, um, advocating for yourself and, um, you know, spending time with family and, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's so different. Um, and I, I have a lot of flexibility. I can set my own hours, which, um, which is really, which is really wonderful, um, especially because I have a young daughter. Um, and yeah, I just, I feel so much more like myself every day. Um, you know, life feels a lot deeper and more meaningful and I feel much more alive. So yeah. Yeah. Um, something that I find, I feel that it is a lot better and something that I think is really great about my field, which was not the case in law, it's very flexible. So for example, um, I can work full time. I work full time at a city hospital and I also can see people in private practice. And if you're, if you're a lawyer, you can't really do that. You can't have kind of more than one, it's pretty hard. And there are all kinds of conflicts in terms of like working at a firm and also having some, having your own practice, a few clients too, you can't do that so much. So that's a nice thing about this field is it's more flexible and you really can set your hours. You can have a real mix. Like if you, in law, I think it's you really have to choose between doing public interest and making money and you can, in, as a therapist, you can see some people for less money, some people really for very little money and some people for lots of money. And there's a lot more flexibility to kind of make your work what you want it to be. And hours. Yeah, and then can you hear me? I, I don't know, I, I dropped out. You can hear me, Kelly? Okay. Um, yeah, no, like there is, uh, the grass is so much greener. It's not even funny. Um, I work 8.30 to 4.30, no exceptions, no emails after 4.30 ever. Um, I, uh, another thing that I love about, and one of the reasons that I got into tech and software engineering is that it, it plays to my eccentricity. Like I might, I might look kind of square with a short haircut, but I'm like, I'm huge into playing in rock bands and I love to write and I love to go on crazy road trips as often as possible. And I'm just a little bit I, like square peg round hole thing with law. Like I just don't fit in there. Um, and I do, I can honestly tell you that if you have kind of a rebel attitude in you and you don't feel like you're able to express it and have it be accepted, um, I've been able to, to completely fit in um, with my company. I, it's some of the weirdest, coolest people I've ever met and smartest too. Um, so it's really, it's uh, intellectually stimulating and the work, the hours can't be beat. Um, another thing that I didn't say earlier that I would say is that something that's worth thinking about. And if you, if you meet with a career coach, they'll probably have you think about this too. Um, but two things, one, one of the courses that I really drew inspiration from when I was kind of in transition was there's a great course on Coursera through Yale called the science of well-being, which is, it's a, it's, it's taught by some undergrad professor and it, it you can get through it pretty quickly, but it kind of breaks down um, a lot of what is, what you think is going to make you happy versus what actually is going to make you happy. Um, and one of the themes of there and in that, in that, in that course, and then also with my career coach was, getting into a job where I can get into a state of flow. And what I mean by that is where I can block everything out and I'm completely focused on what I'm doing 
and completely engaged. Um, whereas in law, I felt like I was constantly distracted and putting out fires and running from one superficial thing to the next and doing a bad job on all of it, um, never feeling very proud of what I was doing. Um, with software engineering specifically, I'll speak just to the, the path that I happen to be on. Um, it commands all of your attention um, and it can be very frustrating, but it's also very intellectually satisfying to be able to get the machine to do what you want it to do. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's my story. That's, that's, that's two cents. I've been chasing flow. And, and also like, as I was saying before, like I have components of my identity that I don't want to monetize, but I want to always have be a part of my life. And like, I can sit and work on my book and try to write the American novel for an hour every morning during the week. And I can go and gig with my band and play out and play classic rock and, and love that. And just do those things for fun that, that bring me enjoyment that, that, that speak to my soul in a way that, um, uh, speak to my soul. And those kinds of things were not going on when I was in legal practice. I pretty much put my guitar away and stopped playing, uh, which is really sad. Um, so I've learned that, uh, having art be a part of my life on a regular basis is necessary to me being happy and, uh, working in this field gives me the flexibility to be able to do that. Thank you. And uh, I know we're at time. So just a final note, I'm going to drop my LinkedIn in the chat for anyone who wants to reach out and chat more, ask more questions. I'm also happy to try to connect you to other folks in the panel. Um, I think everyone here, I'm sorry for volunteering you, but I think everyone here would be uh, happy to chat more. So feel free to send me a message. Um, and a final note, just thank you all to the panelists. Thank you, Gia, Jenna, the CWBSA community, and thank you all for joining. Um, it really means so much to us, and I'm really happy that we were able to share our stories and hope that you're able to um, continue on your journeys, everyone here, uh, to wherever it is that you want to go so that you can find your music and, and find your passion and your fire. Um, so yeah, I hope everyone has a great night. Thank you. Thank you, Tali, and thank you to all the panelists. We really appreciate it. And just, sorry, Esther, I think this is going to be, uh, Lucia, maybe you can answer this question. This recording will be available uh, afterwards, right? Yes, and okay. we will send it, yep. Perfect, so yes, uh, and this recording will be available to everyone online later. So thank you. Uh, have a great night, everyone. All right.